Welcome to another special edition of In the Labs with Todd. I love making interactive projects and this one fits the bill. I wanted to create a Christmas puzzle that little hands could use and could assemble every year that not only could help them with their letters, but also could create some great Christmas experiences for you. In the actual files, I'm gonna show you how to make the shapes so that when you cut them, they'll fit perfectly into the pockets, not to frustrate little hands. Let's see how I did that. You guys have a look at the files that I've given you to accompany this project. So right now we're gonna look at these files or the first file in vCarve Desktop. So let's open up an existing file and we're gonna take a look at the Merry Christmas Puzzle Board. This is the file that I created to make sure I had all the parts I needed. Make sure that you read and understand this note, it's important. And also if you choose to try and cut this, make sure that you adjust your materials and your tooling to fit your needs, okay? That's really super important. And then we'll just click okay. Now, the first thing I did was I laid out my text Merry Christmas, which was very basic. I just used the text tool and I created some text and I used the Berlin Sands uh, FB Demi font. Um, I made sure that my text was just under two and a half inches tall. That's just a random number. I figured that it was going to be big enough so that little hands could pick those up and could use them. The next thing I did was I drew an outside box around this and this represents the border of my actual puzzle. In this case, it was just a rectangle and I added in some nodes. I smoothed those nodes and using the, the handles, I just kind of made them kind of wobbly so it looks like it's been cut out of a piece of ice or something. Now, once I had that, I needed to decide how I was gonna cut this Merry Christmas text. And I knew that I was gonna use a quarter inch end mill and I knew I wanted to make pockets in raised parts to fit inside of those pockets. So the technique that I use is I create a circle. That's the diameter of my actual tool I'm gonna to use. So I create that. And then I take a look at the areas that I'm gonna pocket out and the parts that I'm actually gonna make positive pieces of. So if I run this around, pretend that the M is now a pocket, you'll see that it actually fits most spaces except for it doesn't quite fit into that corner very well. It doesn't quite fit into that corner very well. And then if we pretend that this is actually gonna be the raised M that's gonna fit inside of that pocket, if I move that circle down around here, you'll see there's no way that it can fit up in there to actually cut out these sharp points. So how do I fix that? How do I make these letters be cuttable in the form of a pocket and also a raised part? Well, we have a tried and tested way of doing this and it works pretty much every time. The first thing I had to do was make sure that my spacing was correct. So what I'm gonna do is I select that text and I'm gonna use the offset tool and I'm gonna offset this out the diameter or the radius, excuse me, or half the diameter or the radius of my tool. And I'm going to offset that outward. And what I was making sure of was that my, these offsets didn't run together. So they're all independent, which was good. I had to make a few adjustments so that was all right. So let's just undo that quickly. So now there is a series of offsets we're going to do to make sure that we get the right shapes in the end. And it goes like this. We're going to offset outwards first that half the diameter or radius. So we're going to make, and we make, make sure that we select the new one. So let's offset that once outwards. And then we're going to go inwards twice, one, two, and then outwards one more time. And this end result, which is really hard to see because it's kind of a busy image now, um, is the one that we're going to keep. So to make that less busy so we can actually see what we're doing, we're going to undo all those and go back to the original one that I have. We're gonna make sure that we select delete original. So we're gonna offset outwards once, then we're gonna go ahead and inwards twice, and then outwards once. Then we'll close this down and we'll take a look at the result. So again, let's look at the M. And if we go ahead and grab this circle and we look at the, if this was a pocket, you'll see that it will fit everywhere as it needs to fit which is perfect. And if it's a raised part, then it'll actually fit on the outside everywhere as it needs to fit. Now I made sure that the letters didn't look too odd, but again, with this particular font, it looks really quite nice and I was happy with that. The next thing I did was I copied that all onto its own layer called board. Okay. And then I decided to add in some holly, which you saw a second ago. There's the holly that I made. I created those all by hand and that was for V carving. So that looks looked pretty nice in the end. And then I went to develop some tooling. So let's take a look at the tool paths that I have and we'll go ahead and 
arrange our views horizontally so we can see our preview at the bottom. Let's start off with this fluting toolpath. Now, why did I choose to use a fluting toolpath? Well, because what I did is I wanted the outside edge of my board to have this sort of chiseled look to it. So I took that outside profile vector that I had and I cut it everywhere there was a node and I created this fluting toolpath, which is taking a my V bit plunging it into a maximum depth of a quarter inch, but using the different fluting types and the ramp type to get the shape that I wanted. So when I actually calculated that and we preview that visible tool path, you'll see what I have. Now, I also kept a copy of that outside profile vector before I actually cut it up so that I could create this last cut, which is the profile cut. And as long as I ran that on the outside of that vector, then you'll see what happens. I have a board that looks like this in the end. And it looks really, really cool. So the next thing is we'll V-carve in our Holly, which is a pretty standard V-carve tool path. No big deal there. And then I want to have a look at the pockets that I created for my letters. Now, the thing that I wanted to point out here is the pocket allowance. These are actually slightly larger than the actual vectors that I use to make the pocket. So I used a negative pocket allowance of 0 0.01. In hindsight, I would have doubled that at least because once I put paint on my letters and I clear coated both the our stain and clear coated both the board and the letters clear coated them then I ended up they ended up being slightly big and they were a hard push to get into the actual hole so I certainly would double that up or think about your finishing process to make sure you choose a pocket allowance that's appropriate and again make sure it's a negative we want these holes or these pockets to actually be bigger than the parts that you're going to go into that so I'll have to take a, take a look at the preview of that and this is what we end up with. And I was pretty happy with that. Now, what I did was I took those letters and I copied them into a new file. And in this case, we're going to take a look at this new file in vCarve Pro. You don't need vCarve Pro for this. vCarve Desktop would work, except for I want to use a feature of vCarve Pro that you don't have in vCarve Desktop. But again, you can open up and you can manually nest your letters in vCarve Desktop. So let's open up the Merry Christmas Puzzle letters. Again, make sure you read and understand the notes that are here. And this is just a copy and paste of those letters. Now, what I did was I selected all of those and I wanted to go ahead and nest them. So I'm using the nesting feature here. I select that and you can go ahead and fill out the form depending on the tool you're going to use. So I'm going to use a quarter inch tool. I want to make sure the clearance between all of my letters is a half inch at least. And there's a border gap around my material. I don't mind if they rotate them because I'm not worried about the grain of the wood. I'm actually going to paint them. So it's really not a big issue. And I'm going to make one copy of those. So I'll apply that and we can preview that. And there we have the nesting. I took those and I actually nested those and I centered the results on my material. So this is what we have in the end. And then I went ahead and I created some tooling. Now I wanted my tooling to have, or my letters to have a bit of a beveled or a chamfered edge. So I created a V-carve profile. So it's a profile toolpath using a V-carve bit. I only went down um, an eighth of an inch. And that way I could have this nice sort of beveled look to the top of my letters, which looks pretty nice. And then I went ahead and I created my profile cuts to cut those out. There were some floating bits in the middle here, but I didn't really worry about those. I knew that they were small enough that they would be sucked up into my dust extractor. So I was happy with that. Now let's take those tool paths and go over to the machine and let's cut those out and see what we get. So we're gonna use this one piece of board that I picked up at our local hardware store. We're only gonna use half of it for the letters and the other half for the actual board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure it out and then we're gonna mark it just about halfway just so that I make sure that I have enough material on both sides and then I'll mark the center of those and that'll work out perfect.
So I'm going to take out the R and the Y so that we can test fit it into the other side. So there we are, the R and the Y. That looks all right. Perfect. So this is where we're going to use the fluting tool path to actually cut the edge of the sign so it looks like it's kind of chopped out of ice. So the tool will go along and dip down deep in the middle of the vector and then pop out at the end. So we'll get that nice sort of up and down motion. So we're going to start out with the wood stain and then we're going to do this back part and then we'll go into the letters. Let's give us a bit of a shake. If you do have kids in your house and you want to give that a go, it's going to be a great puzzle for them. But if not, it doubles as a great Christmas sign. I hope you enjoyed watching that video as much as I did making it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to our channel for instant updates, please go ahead and do that. And if you do want to cut this, make sure you go over to your VNCO account and download the files for free. I hope you have a really Merry Christmas and have lots of fun with this puzzle. <laughs>